Thanks for tuning in to the Technique Tuesday Breakdown. For this episode, I got a chance to talk to one of the best Greco wrestlers in the country, in Jesse Porter, and I really got to see inside his mind and see the way he thinks, he trains, the way he analyzes film, and I personally got a lot out of it, and I'm sure that you will too. We ended up uh, getting so into it that we ended up talking for uh, almost an hour, and so I decided to break it down into two videos. So this will be the first video of a series of two. The, this first video, we're going to get into Q&A with Jesse and also breaking down his film with John J. Chavez at the National Finals for 23U. And then the next video, we're going to keep going and we're going to break down his video against Kendrick Sanders in the semifinals of uh, an open tournament, which was a really high scoring match where I, I learned quite a lot. If you want to skip around in the video, just keep in mind that there's a table of contents down in the description so you can hop around to the different questions we asked Jesse, the different parts of the match and the different sections uh, in case you want to do that. Last but not least, if you're a wrestler or a coach watching this that's really serious about continuous improvement and pursuing excellence, please consider downloading the Refine app. I designed the app for coaches and athletes that really want to get into film study but aren't necessarily able to because of time constraints or due to the tedium that it takes to get into film study. We designed it to be as simple as possible. That's the app that we're going to be using in this breakdown. And it, it's an app that is slowly growing, uh, being used by people in the community such as Jesse Porter and uh, top D1 and D2 and even D3 programs that are, are really serious about film study. So if, if that sounds like you and you want to join our community, please consider downloading the app and uh, using, using our, our refined premium cloud service to help you and your team crowdsource film and really get in, into it and make sure that no coachable moments get left on the mat. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the first video with six-time national champion Jesse Porter. What's going on, wrestling community? This is Jim Carucci. Welcome to the Technique Tuesday Breakdown. Today we have a very special guest. A Greco stud, six-time national champion, third time, three-time world team member, and Olympic hopeful Jesse Porter. Jesse, welcome to the show. We're stoked to have you on. Hey, yeah, thanks for having me. So Jesse and I go way back. We both wrestled at Shenandoah High School uh, out near Albany. We wrestled for Coach Weeks, and we wrestled at Journeyman for Coach Frank Papalizio. Shout out to Frank. Uh, I remember watching Jesse coming up when he was a seventh uh, seventh grader, 96 pounder, bullying all the smaller guys. I remember hearing about him, I remember uh, watching him. Always had an amazing work ethic, always had amazing toughness. Jesse's one of my favorite teammates. He has consistently worked his tail off to get where he is now. Uh, it's honestly no surprise to me that he's succeeding the way he is. And uh, obviously he has much bigger uh, aspirations and continues to improve. And he is now forced to be reckoned with in the Greco world. So, Jesse, I have a couple questions for you. First things first, how have you adapted your training regimen in response to the pandemic? I know a lot of people uh, struggle with this. You know, a lot of people can't get on the mat. How have you adapted? Yeah, that's a great question. So it really all stems from creativity. It really does. And I think uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that you really do have to sit down and give yourself a chance to actually think about the situation that you're in. A lot of times we feel pressured to kind of not waste time and to kind of keep the train moving, you know? And I feel like that can work with you or it can work against you. And in the in this case, where you have so much uncertainty and so much so many things changing, it actually works against you. So I actually had that problem too, where I came back and I felt like, oh, what do I do now? Everything's changing. Like I'm, I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And I felt like I had to keep going. I didn't want to waste any time. I didn't want to slow down or lose any of the momentum that I've created, right? So I kept trying to do things and I was doing them inefficiently. And I wasn't giving myself a chance to kind of process what had happened, right? So once I figured out that, you know what, you need to sit down with yourself and try to think about your um, situation from the outside perspective. After I did that and I realized that's what I needed to do, I, my mind started to tell me what I needed to do. It started to bring these ideas. I started to attract these ideas to my mind, right? I sat down and I said, okay, you got this situation here. What's your next move? What can you do? What can we imagine here, right? 
And I did that for a while and in my brain, like I said, started to give me answers and I started to work on it. I said, I listened to myself. I listened to myself and I said, okay, you know, we can try this. Oh, we can try that, you know? And I said, I guess, you know, where it really led me is to making my training totally autonomous, right? You need to be able to make your training autonomous so that you do not have to depend on other partners or um, other training equipment that you don't have. You need to be resourceful, right? And once you're resourceful, you need to use the resources you have to get more resources, right? And so that's really what I what I started doing. And um, another thing that I that I started doing that really helped me is I started my privates where I started to help other wrestlers. A good way to help yourself is by helping other people. So I started to help other people do the same things that I'm doing, which is making their training totally autonomous and um, helping people figure out things that they can do with the resources that they have because a lot of people like i said they don't give themselves the time to think they don't give themselves the time to think about those creative things they can do with the resources that they already have yeah so you're you're really saying you know the still you know the the beat i think it seems like everyone in the pandemic has had you know opportunity to slow down you're saying you know the stillness uh has brought you clarity and and, and helped you with that clarity bring you efficiency in the way you're training and the other thing I'm hearing you saying is, you know, teaching other people is helping you solidify what you know, which is consistent with the neuroscience. If you uh, if you ever study it, you know, some of the best ways, you know, uh, educators help people learn is is by uh, having teachers teach, you know, better students teach students that maybe are struggling, and that actually helps a lot. So I think that's cool what you're doing. The follow up question: Do you do you practice mindfulness? Do you have any mindfulness? Um, type things like are you into meditation it sounds like that's sort of where you're going with this yeah i'm absolutely a full meditation buff that is another thing that i've been into for a while um i fully practice meditation every single day um i think that is really important for your mind it's really important for your uh, mentality um and kind of full circle with your whole mind body and soul it's definitely important to do meditation i think it's definitely been helping me um it helps you do that thing that I was talking about where you have to step outside of a situation and look at all of your options right. and be creative with your resources, right? That can not always be easy to do for somebody that hasn't practiced mindfulness. Mindfulness actually, mindfulness meditation actually helps you practice that because you're doing it with your thoughts. Yep. See, you do it with your thoughts in your head and then you replicate that process with your resources that you have in front of you. It's exactly the same. There's no difference. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of meditation myself. And, I, you know, what I, what I was hearing you say, you know, when I say stillness brings clarity, the clarity brings efficiency. Really, that's, that's what you're, that, that seems to be, I had to encapsulate what you said into, you know, a slick sentence. That's what I would say. Um, and, and so that's really great. Um, I, I'm big on meditation. I do, I do mantra-based meditation uh, every day myself. And it's, it's me a huge difference in my life. So that's good to hear that you're using that and really sounds like you kind of use this part of your training regimen. So that's great. That's a great example for, for other guys of, you know, something they can do uh, to help, help, uh, help be better wrestlers, but also just bring wellness into their lives. So uh, I'm glad that you're, uh, you're, you're a role model and a, and a poster child for that. So that's great. Uh, you also mentioned that you're doing um, training sessions. Uh, how can people get in touch with you and what, what do the training sessions typically consist of you? alluded to the types of uh, techniques you're using, you know, what, what types of equipment do you use? What, 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 uh, what do the training sessions look like? Absolutely. So uh, how they can get a hold of me, um, the easiest way to get a hold of me is to follow me on Instagram. That's at Jay Porter 2015, at Jay Porter 2015. You follow me on Instagram, you can DM me up there or comment on one of my videos and I'll instantly um, answer you there. You can also message me um, on Facebook or you can message me on Twitter. Either, any one of those will, uh, will work. That's how you can reach me. As far as what we actually do in the training, um, you're gonna be basically doing everything that I'm doing. I'm taking the knowledge that I've learned over you know, the past 15 years of wrestling and I'm condensing it for them. That's exactly what I'm doing. So I take everything that I've learned within the 15 years of wrestling, everything that I've learned from coaches overseas, everything I've learned from you know the national team coaches, anything I've learned from my own dad that's coached me, all that stuff is basically packaged. I condense that down into all the training sessions that we do. Um, now, being a little bit more specific with that, you know, with my training, I'll go into 
pretty much anything that I can help them with. Cause my goal is to help them as much as I possibly can. Right. That's my goal. So what I'm looking to do is I go through wrestling technique first. Right. And then I have, I'll even help them with my lifting regimen, like a lifting regimen. I'll kind of give them some things that they can do like body weight exercises, things they can do with the resources that they have. Cause a lot of people need help with figuring out what they can do if the gym is closed. So I'll help them with that. Um, I go into mentality training as well. And this, and this goes back to that meditation thing that I was talking about. That's part of that, right? Mentality training, how wrestlers should look at the situation that we're dealing with right now, right? How wrestlers should prepare themselves for the world um, that we're looking at right now. I go over that with them. And then um, one other thing um, will be with Refine, right? It'll be uh, film. I'll have that app that we go through where we will go through their own tapes and we'll go through some of my tapes. If there's a move that they see me do and they want to learn, I can go through what I was thinking during the match, during the actual match and kind of give them inside an inside look at how I actually came to do that move. Yeah. And I, you were mentioning how you want to use the app to uh, go over your stuff. Would you potentially go over your students film and kind of give them pointers? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's another thing that I can do that I offer with these privates is that, you know, I can look at the person's film, they can send it in, in the, in the app, and then I can break it down with them and say, Hey, you did this wrong here, or I liked what you did here. Um, give them positive and negatives and um, kind of give them a little bit more insight on what they actually need to do or drill in order to fix the holes that they have. Yeah. And that's just something I've learned, you know, just being around high level guys and just getting feedback like that, you know, when, when, when somebody tells you, you know, when a Steve Mako tells you, hey, bottle this, don't do that. Hey, stay after practice, work on these things. That makes a big difference in your training. It's made a big difference for me personally. That's what I do for the guys that I coach. Uh, and, and it's cool that you're, you're getting into coaching also and that you're, you're, that you're really helping people even though you know, it's tough to physically get together. So uh, I'm, I'm stoked that you're doing that and being a great role model and, and helpful uh, to people both on the mat and just mentally off the mat. So. Uh, I, so next question, uh, this is pretty broad. If you had to distill your success down to one character trait, what would you pick? Um, that's easy. Definitely in my mind, it would definitely have to do with um, the character that I've built over the years. It's the certain, it's the unique situations that I was exposed to going through high school, going through middle school, up all the way up into where I am now that have made me the person that I am right now they so mental toughness is right is that you're saying definitely yeah it's a little bit more than mental toughness though it's more about the having having created a mind that is open to new ideas and that is willing that aggressively tries to learn every single day aggressively tries to learn and improve every single day and the thing is is that i'm so grateful for this because you need a very specific amount of experiences in order to create this mindset, right? Not everybody has the right experiences to create the mindset that I have. I, that, that's what I try to help people with in mentality training is I try to give them experiences through talking to me that will help them create the mindset that they need to be successful. Right. So you're, you're talking about, really, you're talking about continuous improvement, growth mindset. This is all great stuff. So, so that's great. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing you uh, uh, coach more people and help them reach success. So um, let's let's actually get into the film and kind of give uh, give people a, a preview of you know, the types of things you would be doing uh, during coaching sessions through the Refine app. And we'll, we'll actually sit down and break down a couple of your matches. First match we'll break down is uh, you versus John J. Chavez, uh, and, and I, I believe that was the national finals. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. And also we'll break down another, uh, another match between you and Kendrick Sanders. So uh, let's, let's hop into the film. All right, so we're hopping it into the Refine app. We're going to go into our library. We'll pull up some videos of Jesse. So we're going to start with uh, Porter versus Chavez. <clears throat> All right. So I guess why don't you give us the backstory to this, to this match. This is the finals. This is the national finals uh, of the world team trials what are you thinking jesse yeah um i remember this match is really interesting the the thing that really sticks out in my head about this match is that i know i knew that i was going to win 
know, I, I really, really knew that I was going to win. It was, it was strange. It sounds, honestly, here's a cool fact. I actually had a dream about this match the night before, right? And in that dream, I won, right? Now, granted, this is a match that I, that could have gone either way, right? It's a guy that was at the time, you know, kind of around the same level that I was. He'd beaten me before. Um, and so I'd never beaten him before. So he'd beaten me before and I'd never beaten him before. So it's a match that could have gone either way. The night before I had a dream that I actually beat him, right? And for some reason, for me, I let that kind of help me during the match. And that's, I think that's a good learning point from this is that when you have those things that really seem like they're kind of coincidental, right? And they don't really mean that much you, you want to use those things as positives right you want to actually use those things as fuels because for me that actually helped me in this match it made me wrestle better so that um, certainty you know, that certainty that you were going to win uh, just push exactly it. yeah just pushing yeah. to make it real yeah I've yeah, heard, yeah. I've heard that. so yeah just pushing the pushing to make that dream a reality really kind of motivated in me in this in this match and um i think it's interesting to kind of realize that and um also this match I feel like, you know, I made, a, I made a lot of technical issues in this match, but I think at the same time, I did a lot of, I showed a lot of mat sense in this match where I knew how to move my body in order to get out of those mistakes that I made. You know, I mean, I make the mistakes and then I know how to get myself out of them, which was, um, which was really good to see. Fantastic, man. So let's, uh, let's jump into the film here. So uh, the first period is pretty slow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually hop in. Uh, you actually get a word, a point for passivity uh, coming up here. So you, you guys, you guys were, were going at it for a while. And uh, you, ended up, you ended up getting a point for passivity. What were you thinking at this point in the match? You know, it's a pretty slow match. Um, you got a point for passivity, but you know, obviously you're a pretty offensive wrestler. I've always, I, I always see you scoring a lot of points. So what are you, what are you thinking at this point? Yeah, so this 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 is one of my mistakes here that I that I've been working on lately. That back when um this match happened, I definitely did a lot of lap drops that were incorrect. Um, for instance, I need did not set that lap drop up right. That type of move has to be set up, right? But I just kind of took that move because I wanted to I wanted to see because he was pushing in right. But yep. that's not really a valid setup. So for, for this move, the mistake that I made is I didn't set that move up, right? You, you, had, him, you had him pushing, but you just didn't have the tie-up you wanted. So what are, what's your, what are some of your go-to ties, tie-ups or setups for that? Last so time? from that position, what I should have done is I actually should have pushed him even more and pushed my elbow or pushed his elbow into his body. Pushed his elbow into his body and then get him to react back. Then once he react back, I need to step underneath his body, get my feet underneath his body more, and then shoot upwards, not backwards. I fell back. I fell back when what I should have done is got underneath his body and then shoot straight up with him, which is going to take his feet off the mat. Then once his feet are off the mat, then I put my hips in and I pop, and I'll be able to get a full rotation there. So yeah, the biggest right. thing is that I didn't get, I didn't get underneath him and I didn't go straight up with the throw, which is a really big point that, um, that I've been working on a lot more um, with all of my throws, right? This is something that I actually teach in my privates too, because this is a, a fundamental issue with, th with throwing. You can't throw back. You need to throw up. And in order to throw up, you need to be underneath the person or have full leverage. So yeah, it's a compound motion, and that's something that I see a lot of guys struggle with you know I, i'm not as much of a greco guy as you are uh, you know i barely competed in greco but i see what you mean it's a compound motion your first motion's got to be up you got to get them off of that then then obviously there's some backwards motion but it's it's a compound motion you're going up you're rotating and and you're going back once you have his feet off the mat his feet never leave the mat so that's not there but you know there's tons of other compound movements uh in wrestling that's kind of hard to get young guys to understand for example coming off bottom Everybody either wants to go straight up or they want to roll around in the mud down. But I, I always teach you want to rotate and come up. You want to, you want to spiral. You actually want to go in a circle while you're coming up and make it harder for the guy to follow you. The similar concept here. You want to, you want to start the move 
by going up, get his feet off the mat, then you can start your compound motion and that'll add up to a good throw. So that's good advice, Jesse. Okay, so we come to later in the match. You're down two to one. Uh, you're on the you're on the clock for passivity here. Looks like you end up getting hit. So what are you what are you thinking at this point in the match? All right, so at this point in the match, I know that I need to get him down. That's where I'm going to win this match. I'm going to win this match when I get the passive call and I get him down. So for me, I'm not too worried about him getting a passive call. If he gets a passive call, that's actually good for me because I know that the, the next one, if it looks even enough, they're going to give me a passive call. So I wanted to make sure that I, that I look active enough that they're not going to call me for passive immediately and that they'll eventually give me my passive. As long as that's happening, I'm going to win the match. Right. That's a good point, Jesse. The, the passive doesn't really hurt you because you're already down two to one. That's your point. You know, you still got to, like you said, you got to get a takedown. You got to get them to the mat. And right. you're, you're looking those, aggressive and, and force, yes. you know, on the flip side, the passivity calling it's him. So that's a good There's point. always slight opportunities every once in a while, especially when the guy feels pressed. And I saw an opportunity here to score. So I seized it, right? If there's an opportunity to score more points, then I'll always be taking that opportunity. And that's what I did here. That's why I, I took my high dive in. So I scored some extra points here, but I knew I didn't need it, right? I didn't need it. All I needed to win was to take him down, right? I just needed to get him from his feet to the ground. And yeah. um, I didn't need to take these risks, but I did because there was an opportunity. Well, that seems to be your bread and butter, just watching you from afar. I see you hit that all the time. I even see you sometimes hit it in uh, folk style, maybe get in a little trouble if you, uh, if you're not jumping on that, you know. But uh, that seems to be your bread and butter, and you're under the gun. You're going, you're going for your bread and butter. Uh, you're seizing the opportunity. You catch him kind of backing off, trying to pummel out and step back, and then you see your opportunity to lock it up and get in there. It's great. So uh, you come in there. And you're looking to you're looking to light it up. You're looking to just put this match away. So I, I love the aggressiveness. Right. That's what I preach. This throw right here, this throw in particular that you just saw, this was also a technique that was wrong, right? I could have cinched here and maybe even end the match. And I think in this situation, I was a little bit too consumed with getting points rather than actually ending the match completely. Because I'm not sure if you can get that out of the way. I'm going to look at what the score is here. But um, it's five to three. So five so, to three sorry. so 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 let's let's re we'll rewind to the start of the sequence. It's three to one. You just got called for passivity. And he's backing off. I'm going. I was going in slow mo. Let's speed it up a little bit here until we get into the actual move. And so you're pummeling. He steps back. Boom. You you lock it up. You're coming in. You're you're looking to take him over. And, and, and but also knowing, like you said in the back of your head, all you need is get him to the mat and you're off because you, you'd have the you'd have the tiebreaker, and you end up. It, it will score more points. He kind of cartwheels, puts himself in, in jeopardy. You got a, you got a, a second exposure there. Now you're looking to put it away, right? You're looking to score extra points here. Well, it looks like it's five to three right here. So even if I got a four point move, that would only make it nine to three, which wouldn't be a tech. Right. You're not you're not looking for the tech. You're just looking to score more points to where you're, you know if you if you right. So tech, so tech, in I'm this case good. in this case I did the correct thing. Because if it were different, right, where the last throw that I had would have ended the match, then the right thing to do would have been to cinch that lift, right, and try to end that match, right? Even if I didn't get it because I took a little bit longer to get it, right, I think that is worth a better bet because you have the potential to end the match there, right? Right, so, so you're, you're trying to end the match. You're trying to, you're, you're, you're trying to throw him to his back and pin him. In this situation – I didn't try to end the match because even if I would have gotten a four point throw here, I wouldn't have got, ended got the match. So you played it a little conservative knowing I'm up by right, two already. Right. I might catch another two, but I'm not going to go for the full thing because I know exactly. there's 36 it's seconds. more important in this particular situation just to get more points than it is to actually get that four point move. Got it, got it. That, when, I, when I say put the match away, I'm not necessarily meaning pin him or tack him. I'm just saying put it out of reach to the point where when you end up back on your feet, he's going to need something spectacular to get you instead of, instead of just a, a two point take. Down. That's, that's what I'm saying. All right. So, so you come up clutch, you're down by two, you end up scoring uh, six consecutive points uh, in, in bunches. And I think that's, that's basically the way the match ends. Um, I think he threw the challenge brick lost. And now, now you're really, uh, you're really fighting him here. He's, he's more the aggressor because you're, you know, you have a lead. 
you're trying to protect protect care and narrate here jesse yeah here it's all just about protection it's about holding that lead right um in this position it would take mm, let's see if you give four you gotta have be up by eight points so that's gonna be 11 and three yeah, yeah it, it's still gonna take a pretty big uh, a move and a couple a lot of points in order for me to tech them here right yeah so since the tech is not really that close in reach for me it's more important to kind of hold the lead than it is to actually try to score more if there's another opportunity to score of course take it i always do but um in this particular situation it's more important to hold the lead than it is to try to end the match right i think that's the big lesson from this match is being is is potential is like scoring awareness right what the score is throughout the match having that having a mental scoreboard in your mind is extremely valuable because then you can know okay if i do this move i end the match or if i do this move it's not going to end the match so instead i'm going to do the easier way and make sure i get some points here right yeah i i preach that all the time when i coach uh strategic efficiency you know especially in evenly matched like you said, this guy's about the same level as you. That's going to that's gonna make a huge difference. And the biggest part of strategic efficiency to me, you know, number one, like you said, knowing the score. Number two is kind of knowing where the clock is, and knowing when to, uh, you know, when um, wrestling well at the ends of periods and knowing like, all right, I'm going to, I want to finish this period on top or I want to finish, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take a shot in this last situation. There's not much time left. You know, even if I get a little out of position, as long as I don't have a nuclear meltdown, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna end up okay. I can, I can take a risk here. So, so you're you're kind of at the other end in this situation where you're you're up, trying to just work the clock. Uh, you're, you're trying to just just hold tight. Uh, he's got you in the front head, and you just keep circling and just make sure that he doesn't he doesn't get any, any extra points on you. Okay, great. So that's, that's the conclusion of the first match. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in for the first video in this two-part series, Breaking Down Film with Olympic hopeful Jesse Porter. Make sure you tune in next week for when we release the next video. Like and subscribe. Make sure you stay up to date with the, all the latest developments on the channel where we do film breakdowns and show you how to use the Refine app to get the most out of your training. Also, if you're serious about Greco, make sure you hit up Jesse for private lessons. Uh, hit him up on DMs, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, I think he's even on TikTok. Uh, get get at Jesse. Uh, he's, he's a great teacher. He's a great coach. He's obviously an excellent competitor. Uh, learn from the best. Don't just try to do it on your own. Uh, so seriously consider that if you're if you really want to jump into the next level. Thanks again for tuning in. Stay safe. Stay wrestling tough.